A while back, I made a video discussing some of the issues I had with Sonic Frontiers and the game recently got its third and final update, The Final Horizon. A massive update to the game adding a new story, the ability to play as Sonic's friends, and so much more. Now that the game has gotten all three updates, I figured if we could come back and see how much Sonic Frontiers has changed in almost one year since its release. Let's talk about it, shall we? There have been a lot of changes made to the game, but I'll start with the biggest one, The Final Horizon, because I have the most to say about that one. The Final Horizon takes place before fighting Supreme in the main story on Oranos Island, and it takes you to an alternate scenario where Sage offers to teach Sonic how to handle his cyber corruption, bringing Sonic's friends out of cyberspace and causing him to suffer from cyber corruption yet again. And while Sonic sets out to do various trials for the positive Titan so he can learn to utilize the power of his cyber corruption, Sonic's, <coughs> Sonic's friends set out to find the Chaos Emeralds, and you switch between the three of them, and they're all pretty solid to play as. Combat with them, not so much, but that's to be expected since the enemies were designed around Sonic, not the other three, especially the Guardians. You can probably level them up and make combat easier, but I never felt the need to. They also each have their own movesets and abilities that allow them to be very useful, whether it be Tails' Cyclone Boost, Amy's Carter Jump, or Knuckles' Drill Snap. It's actually nice to see Amy's love for tarot cards being brought back in a modern game and using her card jump, she can just soar. Like, look at this. Yeah, she can do that. <laughs> Knuckles is here and gliding and climbing are his main things. It looks kind of goofy climbing diagonally as Knuckles, but it's a great addition all the same. Knuckles also pauses for a sec before gliding, which I've seen many people complain about, but personally, I really like it as there are many platforming trials, some of which that take you over the ocean, which means instant death if you fall, and if it wasn't for that split second pause he does before gliding, I would have died multiple times. Then there's Tails, who, unlike the other two, doesn't have a homing attack. Instead, his attack is him throwing a wrench and using his flight which lasts for a limited time, but you can absolutely get some solid distance. And if you unlock the Cyclone Boost for Tails of Skill Tree, you will pretty much never need to touch the ground ever again. Platforming is basically non-existent. Each character also has their own level up Cocos and map Cocos that they can interact with after solving a platform puzzle or just coming across them on the map. And they're all color-coded. Pink for Amy, red for Knuckles, and yellow for Tails. Something else you can find while exploring are these little side stories with the different characters, Talking and there's a ton for each character, such as this one between Tails and Sonic where they talk about the volcano mechanism on Chaos Island. And it turns out the only reason the pinball minigame is there is because the devs of the game were just fucking around. <laughs> or this one between Sonic and Sage where say she says that she's or that she says that Sonic straight up imagines Big being in cyberspace for comfort since the cyberspace is tethered to his mind. And another saying that she can't see the grind rails, maybe she probably just sees Sonic floating, like this nigga just transcends physics, which... Yeah, I can believe it. There's also one between Amy and Sage, where it's revealed these little rock towers were literally just the ancient way of playing Jenga, and I personally just find that hilarious. Another thing you can come across on the map are these little map posts with the chestnut air. If you cycle them, you can find these lookout cocos hidden throughout the map. You can also get lookout cocos from the new cyberspace challenges. They're actually extremely challenging, and so are some of the objectives. Now, I never actually beat a single one of them since I spent so long dipping around on the map, so I didn't need them for the lookout cocos. But the music for them, and really this entire DLC, is really good. Take a listen.
Now, what does the lookout call this for? They unlock the trial towers that you need to climb up to do the trials for the pilots of the Titans, and they are actually kind of telling you to get up since one screw up and you're back at the bottom. Now, none of them are expressly bad with the exception of Snakes, as Snakes Tower Climb has these platforms that are these little barriers that you need to hit in order to proceed, and they do not respawn. So, for your own sanity's sake, save before you do this tower because if you don't, you are quite literally fucked. It got to the point where I switched to easy mode whenever I had to climb the towers because the game take makes platforming super easy to do in easy mode. However, I would always switch back when I made it to the top. The trials themselves are also pretty challenging, even on easy mode, which is nice. I like that there's a sense of challenge even on the easiest difficulty. But there's a caveat to this as not all the trials are made equal. See, each of the trials has stipulations to the challenge. Sonic stats are always fixed at level 1, for example. And of the main four, three of them are incredibly easy. Those three are Tiger's Trial, Crane's Trial, which is the easiest of them all, and Dragon's Trial. Which can be a bit tricky, but that's only because the shield enemies in this game are annoying to fight, especially the Ornos Island ones. Snakes, however, is deceptively deceptive, bleh. Deceptively challenging. I don't know why that was so hard to say. The reason why is because it tells you that the only skill you have unlocked is the Psych Loop, and the enemy in question, Shell, can only be damaged by using the Psych Loop to knock off their shell so you can hit them, so logically, you would think to do one of two things. Either A, you would first think to probably target them one at a time, Psych Loop their shells off and attack any other chance. Nope, you won't have enough time. The other thing you'd think to do is Psych Loop all four and then just attack them while you can at random, but also know they're too far apart so you won't have enough time for that. Well, the regular cycle won't work, what about the quick cycle ability? Nope, doesn't get rid of their goddamn shells. What are you supposed to do? Well, what you're supposed to do is let one of them throw their shield at you from a distance and then attack them while they're fear. And when the shield comes back, you parry it and get into the room of doing that and continue. And while I don't think that's the way it was intended, it's the only way I found that worked. And I found this out from fucking Reddit. So shoutouts to Reddit. God, I can't believe I just said that. Because without them, I might have never beat this trial. Now going from right of to would have, after Sonic's friends get the final three Chaos Emeralds they need to get and start feeling the effects of cyber corruption, Sonic meets Master King Coco, who tells him that Sonic reminds him of another warrior from his time, makes him go through a boss trial to learn how to utilize the power of the cyber corruption, and this fifth trial is rough, dude. In this trial, not only are Sonic's stats level 1 like the rest, but you can't collect rings, and the only way to parry is to use the newly introduced Perfect Parry, a much more time-sensitive version of the parry that I both love and hate. <coughs> I love it because one of my biggest complaints with Frontiers was that the parry was too OP, so having a more time-sensitive parry is great over the timing for it is ridiculous and dead near impossible to get down because it is a frame one parry. So if you don't get it right, you're screwed. And in a boss rush trial where you can't regain rings, if you take too long, you're fucked. Especially on Wyvern, because that boss is very parry heavy. So making a frame one parry, the only way to parry a parry heavy boss, got annoying really fucking fast. Especially since if you screw up, you have to do the flying sections all over again. And since the flying sections already take up a lot of time, you'll be doing that more than you ever will be hitting the boss. And mind you, because you're in Silver Sonic form, you're constantly losing rings. I had so many runs die at Wyvern, especially if I was lucky enough to get to phase two since it got so much faster. And that shit is annoying. I already didn't care for Wyvern. It was already my least favorite boss and I can explain why some other time. But this shit legit made me despise Wyvern because I saw it so many times to Wyvern. It got to the point where the game wanted me to switch to easy mode, but I'm not a bitch. I ain't switching to easy mode. I switched to easy mode. However, the reason I stayed is because on easy mode, the timing for the parry is much easier to get down as it lasts a whole four frames as opposed to the like half a frame on normal and hard. And I was about to say Mars. And if it wasn't for the video on or by Balborb, I legit would have never beat this DLC. So big ups to him because now every fight is legitimately a joke. I also forgot that you can parry Wyvern's missiles. Yes, I'm dumb, shut up. 
And for some reason, in more recent runs, Knight has more goddamn missiles than the US Army. What the hell? Regardless, if you beat the trial, Master King Coco will grant Sonic his new power and warn him that going all out with it will be dangerous and wishes him luck. And after leaving, Sonic goes off to get the chaos emeralds from his friends, learning that they're not handling the cyber corruption as well as he is, but gets the six chaos emeralds from them and the final one from Eggman before going off to fight Supreme. And the first Supreme fight is literally just the same as the Supreme fight from the base game. However, after beating it, the end will come down and take control of Supreme, transforming it into a liar and many others called Beast Supreme. When you first start it, Sonic can't do anything about Supreme's attacks and powers up his cyber power. But his power si there. Sonic can't do anything about Supreme's attacks and powers up with his cyber power, transforming into Cyber Super Sonic, which is when the fight truly begins. And Jesus fucking Christ! I get that this fight takes place in the forest, but the trees with this zoomed out camera is so annoying. I can't see shit. How do you expect me to fight your boss if I can't see it's a tax key shape, Moto? Speaking of fighting this boss, Supreme has this little ball attacks it send will send out that'll lower your max ring count every time they hit you, as well as knock you back a little bit and you have to use the perfect pair to send them back. It also does this little swipe attack that you need the perfect pair, but if you screw up, it'll do this ugly ass fucking run. I I don't like the way that it runs at me. It looks like a bug. This is Merkava dashing towards you levels of fucking ugly and it will grab you before trying to squeeze you like a hedgehog shaped stress ball. This boss also shows off how annoying the lock art in this game can be because you can't really change targets manually in this game which is super annoying because I spent so long just standing in place first trying to lock under the cannon because I learned you have to psych loop it out and then trying to attack the cord but couldn't for the life of me figure out why. And so I learned something, and this is something that the game doesn't tell you in the slightest. Come here. Supreme's head is considered a fucking shield, which makes sense in the stupidest fucking way. Because Supreme's head is literally directly in front of the cord, and because of how big its head is, it is literally guarding or shielding it. Stupid ass boss. Anyway, you need to attack Supreme's head and immediately press R1 or RB, and Sonic will step to the side and you'll immediately lock onto it from there. You just wail on it until it disconnects. From there, the boss is a joke, and you can just wail on it until you need to cycle the cannon out of its place, and then cycle it again to send it to Eggman. Beginning the second phase of the fight, where Sage and Sonic's friends summon a barrier to protect Eggman while he readies the cannon. The cord comes back, and the hands on Supreme's back start going crazy. What you're supposed to do is when Supreme does this scream animation, do what you do for the cord, only this time when you get to the top, with the hands, parry them. And then you take out the cord again, the way you did before, and from there, Supreme is slow to work, however, part way through, Supreme will attack Sonic with one of the balls, triggering a cutscene where Sonic loses his stupor state. You can even see him losing rings as he takes damage, which is kinda cool. Thankfully, this doesn't do anything to the ring count in the actual game. However, regardless, Sonic is protected by the Chaos Emeralds and powers back up to Cyber Super Sonic in a much cooler cutscene. And after this, you have to do what you did before and just finish the boss. My preferred way of finishing the boss is with the parry punch because that cutscene is sick. Speaking of sick, the new rendition of my here is fucking badass. Listen to this. Regardless of how you kill it, after you bring it to bound, Sonic will kill Supreme up into the air, and in the most anime as fuck way, 
spin up to the falling titan and kick it back up before punching it into the air as it falls again and it gets into the cannon charging up to full and power through both supreme and the end destroying them both before collapsing back down to earth next to his friends losing his super form as the chaos was dispersed on the way down or waking up and everyone celebrates and eggman and sage who actually survived this time have an admittedly sweet heartfelt conversation where eggman tells her she did well and tells her that it's time to go home even calling her his daughter and sage takes his hand but i'm be real the whole attempt at a father daughter dynamic still does absolutely nothing for me and i explained why in my original video so just go watch that if you don't know why that wraps up Final Horizon though, as once the cutscene ends, the credits roll and over the credits is a beautiful new rendition of I'm With You. Never knew I needed that until I got it, and now I wish it was in the original Final Boss. But regardless, the Final Horizon DLC is filled with so many good things, fixing most of my issues from the main game, but adding an abundance of new issues that simply work there. The story is solid, but still not great, redeeming the extremely disappointing final part of the game. Instead of replacing it with a much better one, the added gameplay aspects are much the same, fixing problems I had with the original, but adding their own new wells as well. And that's pretty much Final Horizons as a whole. An extremely solid package that fixes most of my old issues, but brings new baggage along with it. That's not even the only change that was made to this game either. There's a photo mode now, which is cool. There's only eight filters and you can't manually save photos. You need to take a screenshot of them, but still, it's nice to have. And a jukebox that lets you play the music from songs from different games or even other songs from this game but for in order to use them you need to travel to different islands to find these music notes which will give you different songs really promoting exploring and running around for example on chaos island you get red mountain from sa1 or on rare island you get one of my favorite sonic songs the e3 2005 version of his world There's also some major changes such as the extreme difficulty mode through as written the battle rush added on day one which has you go through a collection of different battles on each island. I actually only just recently got it and god was it stressful. Because one fuck up and say goodbye to that S run which is very easy to do for a variety of reasons. From the still super heavy hit stop to Sonic just casually doing the wrong fucking move. Thankfully extreme difficulty is extremely fun and challenging as one hit and you are dead so you need to play extremely carefully. But also, cyberspace is much more challenging as they lowered the S-rank times for them, the exception of 1-2. The reward for s rank them is far greater, as you get 4 keys for getting the S-rank and upon three, an extra 3 sorry, upon clearing every mission. Meaning if you play well, you don't need to play through every cyberspace stage again. It's so much fun, so the reward is absolutely worth it, even if the trip there is fucking grating. Then you have the cyberspace challenge, which has you play through the different cyberspace levels again, then once more all together. Upon s running them all, you obtain the power boost for cyberspace, which is way faster and better than a regular limp ass boost. But nothing amazing. But I can confidently assure you that I will not be playing cyberspace again without it, as it's so much better than the regular boost. There's also the island challenges added in update 2, which are point based challenges all through the different islands, and there's 10 of them on each island for a total of 40. And doing basically anything awards you with points from boosting the tricks to beating enemies to collecting these yellow orbs, etc. 
And your reward for estimating them all is Sonic's iconic move, the Spin Dash. And holy shit, the speed, speed, the speed, the smoothness, it feels amazing and makes traversal so much better. Oh, and if you turn jump and deceleration off in the settings, just get ready to watch Sonic fucking soar. Now, my only real issue with it is that it needs to be unlocked, because the spin dash is one of Sonic's most iconic moves. So making it so the only way to obtain it is by S-ranking all 40 of the action chain challenges, an admittedly easy but tedious task, does not sit the best with me. Now, admittedly, the spin dash is amazing, so it definitely feels worth it in the end as a reward, but still. With that though, we've now covered all three updates the game has had, and seeing just how much the game has changed in under a year, it's wild. And while it's still not perfect, as the boost is still incredibly limp and unfun to use, the hit stop is still far too heavy and precise platforming and aiming are a headache due to the still awkward physics, the game is far better now than it was before with all of these changes. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this video took so long, but I'm glad I could finally put out my thoughts on this game now that all the updates are out and seeing how much the game has finally changed. I know, I know, I said that Generations mods were next, but trust me, it is, as I likely won't be covering Sonic Superstars this season, but don't worry, it is coming. It's probably gonna be the next video I do, like, in this series. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, you can tell me how much I suck as both a YouTuber and a VTuber in the comment section down below. Now if you excuse me, I have some horror games to play, which is why I'm in my current outfit. Anyways. Peace out, enjoy yourself, I gotta go, bye.